about George Frederick Hegel, um, a very influential philosopher of the early 19th century, did most of his work during the years of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, the cultural background, the intellectual background was that of the French Revolution and what was universally perceived as the collapse of the French Revolution first into the terror, um, uh, which was a period of tyranny far worse than the, the monarchical tyranny it re had replaced, uh, and then the collapse of the terror into a military dictatorship and widespread war, and the whole problem of how um, such an uh, impeccably uh, liberal Enlightenment project as the uh, French Revolution had turned into this uh, barbarous terror and uh, military dictatorship was a concern for all educated people throughout the 19th century and it forms the backdrop to Hegel's work. So Hegel is writing in the wake of the French Revolution and he's concerned to discover the historical significance of the revolution and how in an age of extreme conservative reaction against that revolution and even against the Enlightenment itself how in these circumstances human freedom might nevertheless be achieved. But the freedom he's talking about is emphatically not the mere license of liberalism or of what we might call Anglo-Saxon utilitarianism, uh, the philosophical system associated with Jeremy Bentham and J.S. Mill. Um, he's not interested in a system that is a system merely of rights that allows individuals to do what they want unhindered by the state or, un or unhindered by others as in the sort of liberalism um, advocated by J.S. Mill in On Liberty. Uh, his idea of freedom is much closer to the Kantian idea of a free society being achieved only when all men realise their moral obligation to do good under the terms of the categorical imperative. Um, the sort of free society that would entail is there being no crime and no dispute because everybody always lives according to self-conscious uh, maxims like I shall not kill, I shall, I shall not lie. Everybody obeys that and so perfect freedom is achieved. Kant describes that sort of situation as the kingdom of ends uh, and it's very like the sort of organic free society uh, Hegel envisages, except uh, for an important difference, which is the Kantian kingdom of ends is not historic, it's, it's only an aspiration. Whereas Hegel's idea of the very similar organic society, he does believe will eventually come to be. But I'll, I'll say a few more words about um, Hegel's historicism uh, during this talk. Also, much of, um, much of Hegel's system and thinking on freedom is highly compatible with Thomas Hobbes, uh, who thought that any sort of bearable human life could only be granted at the behest of a powerful state. So in Hobbes' system, um, rights are given. They're not intrinsic, uh, as John Locke thought and the Anglo-Saxon empiricists thought, the founding fathers of America thought, uh, rights for Hobbes and for Hegel are not intrinsic just to the, or universal, particularly for Hegel, not, they're not universal throughout history. What might be a, a right in one age for Hegel uh, would not be a right in another. Um, so Hegel is rejecting universal rights he thinks that political rights guaranteeing freedom are specific to certain types of society and points of evolution um, that these societies have reached. So in terms of Kuhn's theory, which I've mentioned before, the structure of scientific revolution, the idea of paradigms, Hegel is very much like Darwin uh, and indeed Karl Marx and others um, as part of that 19th century paradigm of evolution of seeing change uh, rather than uh, static universal states as being the, the fundamental uh, way to understand the world. 
changes everything for Hegel, just as it is for Darwin, Marx. One way to understand the liberal freedom from versus Hegelian freedom to debate is on the issue of smoking. The classical liberal idea would be that if people wanted to smoke, then they should be allowed to do so. The state should not restrain them. But there's another argument. What about the people who don't want to breathe the uh, smoke from others, passive smoking? There the state must intervene to establish their right uh, and to restrain the smokers, actually, and stop them smoking. So that's a Hegelian freedom to enjoy a smoke-free environment or to enjoy good health. It involves the denial of the liberty, the liberal freedom from restraint on the smokers. More than this, I think it's fair to say that smoking's irrational behaviour anyway. So in the rational organic state that Hegel envisages, the ban on smoking would be natural and nobody would dream of breaking it because it's in their own interest anyway. It's a rather good example of self-realisation in freedom as opposed to mere liberal license. So Hegel's idea is people must be literally forced to be free, really. And always one of the implications of the Hegelian system is a type of totalitarian where a strong state directs or creates the population in a way that's similar to Plato's idea that the function of the state is to educate and shape its citizens and not the liberal idea, uh, the contract idea of the state, which is the exact opposite. So Hegel's critique of the negative liberal idea of freedom, the freedom from idea, is that it is alienated. That's a key piece of terminology from Hegel, which I'll come back to. But basically, it means that uh, people are separated from their own true nature. So smoking is a highly alienated activity. It's not something that a natural human would do. Um, anyway, liberal freedom is always alienated. Private uh, wants and desires can and often do come into conflict, conflict with the needs of the people as a whole and with the needs of the state. And such private alienated wants and desires can also be self-destructive. So the, the state must care for, for the population. His idea of positive freedom, therefore, involves guarantees given by a rational state that all needs will be met. Such a state or society has not yet existed, Hegel thinks. He looks at history and he doesn't see any state that comes near that, although perhaps the ancient Greece uh, was the closest to it. Um, and until uh, such time as we have states that will be organic, that will rule in line with the true nature of people, then all actually existing states have to be measured against this ideal. Now, Hegel, as a university professor, was an employee of the Prussian state, um, and he thought that the Prussian state was far closer to the organic state than uh, that of Greece, and certainly much, much closer to the rational society and the ideal organic state than the anarchy of the French Revolution, or, for that matter, the arbitrary and tyrannical government of the Middle Ages or the French monarchy that preceded the revolution. So he sees the Prussian state as being... Um, on the road, as it were, to the historical development of a truly free uh, society. Uh, it was a, it, the Prussian state was a constitutional monarchy. It guaranteed rights to some extent, but it certainly didn't allow license or too much dissent. It was rather authoritarian, but it was a step in the right direction. And Hegel thought uh, the Prussian state was it was a force for good, essentially. Um, at, that was at the very least uh, capable of, of evolving towards a perfect society.